Hello, I'm Chief Warrant Officer for Vic Pinion, U.S. Navy retired, telling some stories of my naval career. This one is about starts, it, it really, during my career, I was stationed on two occasions with Chief Warrant Officer Doug Cheney. He was a chief, ABE chief, aboard the USS John F. Kennedy and was the uh, maintenance chief on there when I was serving as the maintenance officer. We worked well together. Doug's a good man. He's a good maintenance chief. I recommended him for warrant, and he made it. A funny story there when I, when I tell that story during my John F. Kennedy tour. Uh, but this story is primarily after I retired from my naval career. Well, Doug transferred from the Kennedy to Lakehurst, New Jersey, where I went after my John F. Kennedy tour uh, as the instructor of the Aircraft Launch Recovery Equipment Maintenance Officer course, brand new course which we helped to develop. In any case, I went on and retired, and Doug transferred to a ship as the maintenance officer, and we were going to establish a maintenance management and mentoring of people in comments in those positions, business for after he retired. Now I had been retired for 10 years. He transferred from his last ship to the Naval Air uh, Auxiliary Landing Field at Fentress, Virginia as the officer in charge. And he was going to retire from his career at the end of that tour. Well, Fentress LF Fentress was very popular duty station for shore duty ABs, and uh, Doug's the officer in charge of it. In any case, this was during like 1998, when severe undermanning of the U.S. military across the board, all branches of the armed forces, severely undermanned, and his base. ALF Fentress became so undermanned that they could they didn't have enough people to man the crash crew. And without that, it was illegal to open the base for the squadron's aircraft to do touch and go landings there and uh, field carrier landing practice. Doug tried everything. He told me about this. This him and I were planning to do that managing management uh, consulting and, and uh, mentoring business for after he retired. Well, I was visiting uh, some of my kids that lived out there in that area, and uh, he told me about his struggles to get more men, more manpower. And he had tried everything he could think of, just everything. I told him, I said, well, Doug, this is exactly the kind of problem that you and I anticipate helping people solve after you retire and we start our business. Why don't we let me be your mentor here and let's work on solving this problem. He's ready to try anything. Yeah, go ahead, Bosun. You know, he, he called me Bosun at that time, although he's also a Bosun. But I came home to Tennessee, where I lived at the time. I live in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas now, but I lived in, uh, in East Tennessee at that time. And I researched his base and sources of manpower and so forth. And I started uh, investigating, devising different things to try to resolve his problems. Long history of making lists of things. So I made lists of possible sources of help and of possible temporary means of getting people, like getting people temporarily from other commands uh, to man his crash trucks, well, you know, and, and get him through the, uh, the undermanning crisis, and so forth. And two weeks later, I sent him those lists with possible courses of action. And now these are courses of action for him to take. I've done my part. The first thing he tried was one of the things that I had recommended on that list. What it did was it got him <coughs> eight qualified crash crew members from aircraft carriers that were laid up in the yards 
in the shipyards undergo an overhaul or a three month restricted availability. They would send them on temporary duty to Pinterest as crash commanders. His problem solved. He's not going to lose his base. He had been threatened with that if he didn't shut up and go away, which he couldn't. He just couldn't. <clears throat> he didn't want his legacy be, to be the man that lost that base. Well, his base was solved, and that not only solved his immediate crisis, but it was good for the Navy all around. It, uh, it kept those crash crew members current, those aircraft carrier crash crew members current, so they would be serving as crash crew members instead of chipping paint and painting on the ship and serving as other duties aboard the ship while the ship was laid up in the yards. So it kept them current. And it also may have developed into a permanent source of manning for the agro-Atlantic field. If it didn't, I think maybe it would be beneficial to the Navy and cost effective, very much so. In any case, Doug served his tour duty and transferred uh, to France to be the American exchange officer for catapults and wrestling gear aboard the brand new French aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. He was going to turn that job down and retire and come into business with me. I said, man, don't you let me have those orders. You know, I'd love that. And <clears throat> if you go out to the French carrier and you do a good job on there, we can add to that to our resume for when you do retire and we start our business. Well, he served on that French aircraft carrier, Charles de Gaulle, and he did a good job. He set the standard on there. And then he retired. And we were going to kick the business off. And I also had the first contract, a verbal contract, with the Commander Naval Air Systems Command. Commander Mike Weeks was uh, the commander in charge there at that time. And Doug backed out. He found a good high paying job uh, and he took it instead of doing the business with me. And I was disappointed by that. And there were several other people that knew what Doug and I were up to and several other warrants or LDOs and one Master Chief wanted to do it with me. But although they were all good men, all had good successful careers, but none of them had the character in reality that I was looking for to uh, to do this mentoring business. So I, you know, I was disappointed Doug didn't do it with me. Anyway, I never kicked off the business, and that's one of the reasons I'm doing these YouTube videos, uh, just to tell about my career and things that I did, and. After you retire, whether you're employed with the government or not, you can still be effective. Ten years after I retired, I served as a mentor to my friend Doug Cheney in solving his problem, and it worked. End of story.